have been given a challenge to start a fire. Now, one of our recent live streams, um, actually a few live streams, I've mentioned that I never really started a fire. Like in being with Glenn for so many years, he always loved starting the fires whenever we went camping or out for picnics or at the barbecue at home, whatever. He always started the fire. So I never worried about it. And then back in episode 15, 16, we did a fire. It was like minus 40 degrees out, minus 35 degrees, very, very cold. And we tried to start a fire with our ferro rods. It was then that I realized I had never started a fire before. And, you know, that's not good. Like, it's great that Glenn starts the fires. I love it. I'd be quite willing to let him do it all the time. But while we were doing that challenge, I started thinking about it. What if we were out for a winter hike and he fell? And he got injured. He broke an arm or he passed out or something where I had to hurry up and get heat. Well, I better know how to start a fire now, right? So, Glenn said... Get out there, go start a fire, he says, because in one of our upcoming live streams, you're going to be put to the challenge to start a fire. So get going and do one now. So I'm out here. It's not the greatest day. It's nice. It's overcast, um, a little bit breezy, you know, threatening rain or snow or something. So anyway, come along with me and cheer me on because I'm going to start a fire. Glenn's nowhere around. He's out doing something else. So um, I'm on my own to start a fire with a ferro rod. <laughs> so I'm going to do the steps that Glenn always did. Um, now he always says start with yellow birch. White birch is best. We have yellow birch. So yellow birch will work. So um, I need to get some more though because I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> Okay, hopefully this is enough. And now I need fine wood. Fine, like little fine things. Kind of like, I don't even know if you can see this. I need some of this. So now, that's, that's the next step. Go find some little stuff. The one thing Glenn said was to make sure it snaps. When it snaps, you know it's dry. Now it's like trying to remember everything he said about starting a fire, right? It's just a case of looking for the right stuff. Now I know nowadays it's so easy for us to sort of put off things like practicing this in case something ever happens or being prepared. But we shouldn't put that stuff off because the idea of being prepared is for the surprise emergencies, right? And surprise emergencies don't let you know when they're coming. So you better be ready for them, right? At least that's how I think. So um, now he did say too to get some, to get some bigger stuff like this. This was right here, like great. And it snaps. This here. Now it's best to get what's known as standing dead timber because when it's standing it's drier or if it's off the ground leaning on something else. Like this stick, this tree here, it was off the ground. Now when we were doing that video at minus 40, I started getting really nervous. Now was it minus 40 or minus 32? I don't know, it was really cold. And I started thinking about it. Like what if this was real? I couldn't get the fire going. And I thought it'd be like, oh yeah, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna light the ferro rod and <laughs> away we go. No, it was a, a real challenge. 
and it was a real eye opener. Okay, well, I got everything ready. I got the birch bark. Lots, well, hopefully it's enough birch bark. And some fine stuff. It cracks. Well, it did. It started to rain since I started this process. But anyways, I got the fine stuff. And some bigger, a little bit bigger stuff. And some sticks to cook my tea. So... Let's give this a spin. This is going to be interesting because now it's raining, right? I headed out thinking, oh, I'll beat the rain, but I didn't. So now I'm starting a fire. It's drizzling. So let's see how I do and drizzle. Well, it's a little bit trickier in the rain. Now, I suppose this is where you have some other types of fire starters, right? Like a little bit of cotton and oil, the battery and the steel wool. Just other things to try, right? So here, I thought I would just try and rip it up a little bit more. Okay, I'm back from trying to find some dry birch bark. Let's see. I can't even get this to strike. Well, I don't know if this is going to work. I'm going to have to resort something else okay well well I went in my camera's getting really wet uh, I went in and I got some cotton with oil one says remember you don't have to be a purist bushcrafter this is the idea of using what you have in your pack to start the fire and in our day pack, oil and cotton is one of the things we keep. So, let's see how we make out. Let's see if I can get that started. It's raining, a ferro rod's not sparking up much. Look at that, it's not even sparking. Oh, I got it. There. Looking like a good helping hand. Okay, is it gonna go? I don't want to, I don't want to put the birch bark out. Okay, well this is my challenge for starting a fire and getting a tea. It's raining, it's getting dark. I got the fire started, woohoo! Oh, look at that! I got boiling water, woohoo! Okay, I got tea! 
My water did boil. It's getting dark really fast. Just enough water for a cup of peppermint tea. Woohoo! I did it. I made fire and I made a tea in the rain. Ah. So anyway, thank you very much. I appreciate you joining. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so by clicking on the subscribe button down below and click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified of upcoming events in cabin life. We do videos and we do live streams twice a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we start them with a campfire. One of the coming up live streams will feature me starting the campfire. I guess that's like part two of my challenge of starting a fire. Anyhow, thank you very much for joining me. For Glenn, I'm Maureen. Over and out and take care.